All right, so this is question four. I think uh, Alana said G. So for this question, you need to find the gradient and you need the y-intercept. Those are two things. The gradient is always next to x. Think of that. It's always paired with the x. Okay, so in this case, the gradient is 4 over 3. Now, because it's a fraction, I don't need to put it over 1. Only if it's a whole number do you put it over 1. So if the answer was 4x, then you'd make the gradient 4 over 1. But in this case, okay, it's 4 over 3. So we'll leave it as that. Easy. Okay, the y-intercept is the number that's on its own. In this case, it's negative 2. Okay, now in the sack, you'll probably have the graph drawn for you already, but I will draw it for you here. Okay, so here's my graph. Now, for whatever reason, some of you just can't imagine that there's numbers here. Okay, I don't know why, Okay, but there's numbers there. I don't need to tell you what they are, but in that middle right there is zero, yeah? If that's the case, <clears throat> okay, and we're moving away from zero, each of these values just go up by one. Okay, so you can just imagine it. This is one, two, three, four, five. This is one, two, three, four, five. This is negative one, negative two, negative three, negative four, negative five, negative one, negative two, negative three, negative four, and negative five. Okay, there is my graph. Just visualize it. All right, the next thing is now I need to plot my two points. I can already find one point with the y-intercept, and it's negative 2. So on my y-axis, so this is your y-axis here, the line that goes <coughs> up and down, okay? It's negative 2. There's my first dot. My next dot is based off my gradient. Now, according to the gradient, we're going to go up four spaces and then across three. So from the dot, you go up four. One, two, three three, four, and then you go to the right three spaces. So one, two, three. There's my other dot. doesn't have to be perfect, but as long as it's close enough, that's what you want. Okay, if your graph looks something like this, then you're on the right track. Okay, you're doing this well. I'll do one more. I'll do Esther Vines one, which was, he said G. Okay, so uh, G, oh, sorry, hey, uh, Esther Vines, which one did you want, sorry? H, H, yeah. So negative 7 over 2x plus 6. Ooh. This is the thing, yeah. If you can do these two methods, so this one, and then I'll do in the next, in question 6, if you can do those two, the sack shouldn't be too crazy for you. Okay, so again, same thing. You're just looking for the gradient and the y-intercept. The gradient is the number with x, or paired with x, so it's negative 7 over 2. The y-intercept is the number by itself, so that is 6. So when we graph this, okay, your Cartesian plane will probably look like this. Okay, you got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. One, two, three. Okay, so I don't need to do this, but I will do it for your sake, yeah? They're just numbers there. Just imagine that they're all there. I'm not going to, you're not going to see them labeled all the time, but they will be there. Okay, negative one, negative two, negative three. Negative one, negative two, negative three. Now, look at the question. The y-intercept is on six for the y-axis, so... For my y-intercept, look for it in the y-axis. This is your y-axis, yeah? So it's on 6. That's the first one. My gradient is negative 7 over 2, which means I go down 7 and across 2. So on my actual graph, start from 6. I go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And then you go across 2. 1, 2. There's your other dot. You've got your two dots, and then you just draw your line. Yeah, that's all you're doing for that method, the gradient and intercept method. All right, I'm going to do one more question from six. Uh, sorry, from five. Pick one question, anyone. D, this one here. All right, so 3x <laughs> minus 4, okay? 
Actually, can I pick another one? Because you guys, this one's easy. If you got a question like this, you can graph it, yeah? G or L, I'll do, let's do L. Okay, how about that? 5Y minus 2X. Uh, let's do that one. 5Y minus 2X, oops, sorry, equals 12. Oh, thank you. Can you guys see that? All right, okay. All right so with this one here, okay? You're splitting this into two parts. You need to find the x-intercept and the y-intercept. You can start with any one of them, but either one will do. So for, I'm going to split this into two, two four. Let's go for the y-intercept. Okay, you're going to change x to, to 0. Okay, so in this question, if I want to find the y-intercept, I've got to change x to 0. So if I rewrite this, okay, I'm going to get 5y equals, uh, sorry, minus 2 times 0 equals 12. And then we just solve it for what it is. So it's 5y, negative 2 times 0 just gives you 0. So we just leave it as nothing. And then you're left with 12. Now you get a question like this, okay, all you got to do is isolate y. So when you get rid of the y, so when you make y by itself, this is a times by 5, and it becomes divided by 5. Now, if you get a question like that, I know it's going to be weird, but just put it in your calculator. 12 divided by 5 equals 2.4. So y equals 2.4. So what that means is on my graph, okay, on my graph, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Yes, Charlotte. Would it be, would it be like, like marked as 2.5? Uh, no. Actually, it should be 2.4, though, because it's exact. Yeah, but the graph's so small. Oh, I don't mind. As long as, so when you put y equals 2.4 on the graph, so 2.4 is technically like somewhere here. So if that's 2, 0. 0.5 is there, 0. 0.4 will be right there. Okay, that's the first one. Y equals 2.4. And can anyone tell me what's the coordinate for that? It'd be what? 0, 3.4. That's why I always write this because that's the actual coordinate for the Y-intercept. Okay, so now next one is for the X-intercept. Okay, so if I was trying to find the X-intercept, Okay, change y to 0. Okay, that's all you're doing. So if I rewrite this question and I change y to 0, it's going to be 5 times 0. Take away 2x equals 12. Solve it for what it is. So 5 times 0 just becomes nothing, and you're left with negative 2x. So negative 2x equals 12. Now this is negative 2 times x so if i bring it to the other side it becomes divided by negative two so x equals negative six when you put it in your calculator 12 divided by negative two gives you negative six so the coordinate for this negative is negative six zero which means that on the x-axis it's not there but i will draw it for you okay oops so negative six zero so if that's negative one Negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, negative 5, negative 6. The coordinate is right there on the x-axis. Okay, which would be negative 6, 0. And then from there, we draw our line. Okay, any, uh, any questions? Alright, I'm going to pause it there.